XLM is still holding on to its gains from the announcement of an announcement which is due here in the next six days. We're gonna talk XLM price action. Along with 99% of holders of this are in the red. We're also gonna hit up some stats regarding crypto exchanges and what it would take for more exchanges out there to list more crypto and to even get into crypto. And the whiteboard behind me says, Charts are very one dimensional. I'm gonna share a story with you and I'm checking off my list everyone, getting ready for my big trip out into the mountains. Let's start it off with your comments. XRP to the moon says, look at the five year chart class on XRP and XLM. The cycle is repeating a look from October 5th, 2018 to January 21st. Compare that to March 31st, 2022 to now. They're identical. I think we will have a merry, merry Christmas. Dude, there's no money. There was much more money then, and there was also fewer cryptos in the market to invest in. In fact, you know what? I'm gonna do a deep dive video on this that I'll be able to share with you either later today or tomorrow. So make sure you hit the subscribe button so you don't miss out. And the chart they're talking about is this, yes. When you look at it just this way right here, you're like, gosh, it looks like we're gonna repeat what's happening again. The first move here though was what? Big ICO boom, right? There wasn't as many cryptos to invest in. This boom here was money printer go bird time. Economic conditions have changed. What does the whiteboard say? Charts are very one dimensional. What these charts here aren't telling you is that money supply is tight. Venture capital is, no, just, just wait for the video, okay? I'll give you a deep dive explanation. Jeremy Touche, 1399 says, this is why people are running from the crypto space. Sad, freaking too many lazy criminals out there. Yeah, did a story about Stake.com getting hacked for 41.3 million. By the way, over 60 billion in hacks and rug pulls and scams in the crypto market. Complete mess. You want crypto to get big? Well, let's get into these articles because we're gonna talk about it. Bitcoin's in at 25,731, E1635. XRP clinging on to 50 cents at 50.1, while XLM right now retracing from its highs at 12.2. We're gonna go deep into XLM price talk with XDC, uh, the other favorites of the show, sitting at five and a half cents, down 2%. Now, for those XDC fans out there, how low do you think XDC is gonna go here in the next couple months? I've seen people calling out three cents. That would be a massive, massive decline. Fewer than 50% of global exchanges. See, I told you not just US-centric stuff. Come on now, everyone, be fair with the news guy. Fewer than 50% of global exchanges willing to host crypto a survey finds. A World Federation of Exchanges survey has revealed fewer than 50% of the respondents are willing to host crypto assets without safer vehicles like ETFs. And we saw just the mentioning of the SEC and the ETF with Grayscale thing really sent the markets up. Now it didn't last pumps and dumps, okay? But seriously, what if they get approved? Of the 29 surveyed, only 12 of the 29 supported crypto with seven of the remaining 17 actually interested in offering crypto in the future. Why is that though? As this industry and market matures coming into the mainstream of financial markets, the exchange traded model which places investor trust, transparency, accountability, and investor protections at the heart of the platform will gain further momentum. You need to fix those things. So the idea of stake.com getting hacked, the idea of not having an FDIC like vehicle of insurance, the idea that you don't believe what these exchanges are putting in the reserves. OKX has done how many proof of reserves? Do you believe them? All right, come on. And what do proof of reserves tell you? They just tell you what they're holding. We really can't verify it because I'm sure there's wallets we're not shown. And we don't even know if they're making money. So what's the point of showing a proof of reserves if you're deeply in the red? But what's interesting about this is they're waiting for ETF action in the United States. Again, the U.S. is very pivotal because global economies out there aren't as big as the U.S. They don't have the resources. They also don't have the resources of BRICS nations out there. So these countries wait for the U.S. and they wait for the U.S.'s lead to then deploy their own products or their version of their own products. But I find it very interesting. Investor trust, transparency, accountability, and investor protection are at the heart of the platform. That's the big issue. You need to fix those four things if you want crypto to move. Ooh, 99% of all Axie Infinity AXS addresses are in the red. Now, I'm bringing this story up because I wanna share with you that Axie was one of the first. I think they were the first actually to go onto the scene, but that doesn't always mean you're gonna make it. What about AOL, right? 
Everyone remembers you had to log into AOL to access the internet. Now you don't need that. In particular, data by the cryptocurrency analysis platform in, into the block and shared by analyst Ali Martinez on September 1st indicates that 99.5% of AXS addresses are currently in a state of loss. It's more noting that AXS was one of the best performing assets in its category in a bull run. However, the current price trends suggest waning confidence among investors. Again, confidence, right? Well, here you go. And as always, any article you see in this video, along with all my other ones, will be linked in the description below, along with my Twitter information. Here's the chart, and this shows you January, April, like majority of addresses were in the green. And then look at this, just has totally peeled off. So are cryptos and projects and programs like Axie going to be done? What about the whole play to earn model? Comment down below. Is that completely done too? Let's get into excellent price action. All right. Excellent. Announcement of an announcement, which is set to hit here in about six days. Okay. Set is going all the way up to just under 13 cents. Got to a high of 12.91. Just about that 13 cents mark. But then look at this a little bit of a mini retracement right now sitting at 12.3. I'm happy about this. And I know, I know, a lot of you out there say, Klaus, you don't bring any good news. No, I do. It's just I think a lot of people just don't listen or they don't watch the whole video. But the reason I'm happy about this is XLM actually moved up on their own organic news. It wasn't like they moved up, like as you can see here from the SEC thing here, this original pump, right? Remember the ETF pump right here that didn't last? Yeah, that same thing, okay? That was news not directly related to Stellar XLM. But when you zoom in to the 15 minute on the chart here, you can see that yes, this movement here was directly related to the announcement of the announcement. In fact, if we go to Twitter, and let's do that here really quick, you can see that their tweet regarding the announcement, here it is right here, something cool is dropping in big days, that was done on September 2nd, got 272,000 views. And it also has propelled the price up. And I, I think that's great because XLM holders need this. They need movement on news actually coming from their camp, not just global macroeconomic data or you know action from XRP and the SEC or action from the SEC and Grayscale. So organic news driving some organic bullishness. Now, will this move last? Look, I get it. A lot of you out there are big fans of XLM, but what moves in this crypto market have lasted? My personal belief, it's gonna be another pump and it's gonna dump back down, right? I, seriously, and even seeing it right here, this kind of made me wonder, all right? When I saw us breaching that 12 and a half and we got rejected, and then I saw we made that move to 13, and I was like, okay, okay, I, I kind of like this. Maybe we've got it. But then I saw this stark move all the way back down here, blasting right past 12 and a half. 12 and a half didn't hold. And this is just near term. So me, if I was a betting person, which I'm not, okay, come on now, Klaus. But if I was a betting person, I would say, I doubt this move is going to last. Now, could we make a few more pumps up until the actual announcement of this announcement? It's very possible. But crypto has operated on the idea of buy the rumor, sell the news. Torres pump, right? SEC action. None of the stuff is really lasting because there's not as much money. That's why when I brought up the earlier comment when the viewer was like, yo, dude, these charts look like they're repeating themselves. We're going to have another run here at around Christmas time. Economic conditions are very different right now. In fact, I did a story earlier. Well, you know what? Let's just go big screen really quick. But yeah, I, I did. I did a story earlier about XRP and flipping the switch. And what I shared in that video had to do with the Korean exchanges. See, the Korean exchanges were responsible for a lot of the pumps of XRP. Now, what happened was this. When the news came out with the SEC and XRP, the Korean exchanges flipped the switch and actually started selling, creating the down pressure of XRP while the U.S. exchanges started ramping up. Very, very interesting dynamic here because it almost seems as if the Korean exchanges and the Korean traders out there, all the pairings tied to the Korean one, KRW, bought the rumor, sold the news, and used the U.S. market as exit liquidity. Coinbase was trying buy, 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 buy. Korean exchanges, sell, 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 sell. There was way more volume coming out of the Korean exchanges than there was positive coming out of, say, Uphold and Coinbase. So I wanted to share that with you because as we're going through this near-term move with XLM, again, based around organic news, which is a good thing. See, I told you I bring news both good and bad. That's why you hit the subscribe button for news on both sides. I'm happy. I'm happy that it's organic, but I'm also very cautious because I just don't think it's going to last. 
all right? The market conditions are very different and I'll do a video specific about that coming out here today or tomorrow. Now, that video I did earlier about XRP and flipping the switch regarding the Korean exchanges now kind of using the US for exit liquidity, that is right here. What am I doing today? Checking off more on the Colorado travel list. It's like five, six pages long. It's pretty crazy. You cool cats though, have a great rest of your day and I'll see you all at 14,000 feet.